Hi, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Reality Is. As always, it's Snoor, and I'm so freaking excited that my my now in real life friend, Amanda Hunt, is on. Hi, hello. <laughs> Hi, hello. Great to see you on screen as it was great to see you IRL so recently. So recently. I was like, we were just <laughs> having lunch the other day with a little baby yeah. boy waiter. Oh my God, he was the sweetest, youngest child. He ha- He had a real, like good version of James Kennedy when he first joined Vanderpump Rules. You know, so young, so slender, so So, slender. He was a Victorian child, a sickly Victorian child. That is what the youth (laughs) would say about him. It's true. He's a great server. Yeah, he was a good server. Do you think that when he moved to Los Angeles, he was like, I'm going to one day be a sir server? Oh, of course. At other restaurants? Everyone wants to work at Sir. Really? That's that's a line from season one, Stassi. Oh. I, she was like, at Sir, every server wants to be a model and an actor. At other restaurants, everyone wants to work at Sir, which is <laughs> simply not true. Um. <laughs> we should have asked him. Yeah. <laughs> the slender man who. <laughs> I feel like he's young enough that he's like, oh, I don't, I just watch YouTube videos. You know, like he doesn't yeah. watch a whole TV yeah. show yet. Yeah. My kids actually don't quite fully understand the idea of television shows. Like they just started getting into it, but they'll be like, is this a show or a movie? I'm like, it's a show. I'm like, oh, okay. Or they'll say, are you watching that video? And I'm like, it's not a video. It's a television show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're like oh okay like they think it's so weird it's like it's like i think feel like back in the day where they're like i'm gonna watch my talkies and like <laughs> yeah <laughs> or like i had a nanny who used to watch her stories I- while we were napping <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and that feels very spot on <laughs> yeah yeah and now if my kids said i'm watching stories it would mean completely something completely different yeah and you'd be like did you get an instagram account you can't have that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, okay, so much has happened in the last 24 hours. Um, when we we hung out, we talked a little bit about how Sandoval is coming in with this whole, I'm a wounded bird and I need my people around me situation. This episode also really went into that. But unfortunately for him, he did an interview with the New York Times Magazine and um, it came out at a time which I truly have to say, like, congratulations to them. Now, I – did you read the article or did you listen to it? I didn't even think about listening to it. I read <laughs> it. I highlighted and shared key passages uh, with others, some people who watch the show and some people who I'm like, but would you – would this make you watch the show? Uh, <laughs> Um, the Kyle Chan of it all. Oh, God. So happy for all these lurkers who've been trying to get on Vanderpump Rules forever and they finally have their chance. <laughs> that's honestly, that's exactly what's going on with Kyle Chan and also with Billy Lee. I'm like, look at these opportunists. They're like, they're like, you need and like, somebody. I get it. LA is really hard. You got to <laughs> just hang out, wait for your opportunity. Like, I'm trying to be a writer every day. I, I, you know, my integrity slips down just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. So I wrote more notes about this article than I did about the actual episode of Vanderpump Rules this week. And I, I feel think like that's, that's appropriate. Yeah, that feels right. Yeah. So um, some of my favorite parts of this article was, um, number one, number one, the hero of this article was Riley, the 23-year-old publicist who has no idea what the hell she's doing. Bless her heart i okay and then the cup god and thank you for posting that cake thing today (laughs) interview did an interview with tom sandoval where he ate some cakes grocery store cakes that's so vanderpump rules i i that's dead on for the show that is good branding okay also it wasn't even like he really ate them he just like was pictured with them and then like sexily putting a fork in his mouth like he's nigella (laughs) from the food network and it's like you're not the man has visible abs at 50, we'll say. Uh, he doesn't eat cake. He's no. never – he hasn't had cake in so, so, so long. No. And also, like, each picture is, like, him sexually eating a cake or whatever, and then it's just, like, one sentence. He's like, 
like this cake is like really good dude like it's like that that's it that's how this like the air one cake he's like i think this cake is like like 900 bajillion dollars and i think taylor swift would eat it like that what are you doing that's riley riley got him that i'll tell you like i one time threw some money in the trash and lit it on fire by hiring a publicist to help me with (laughs) <laughs> with my one woman show monica Lewinsky sings your heart out and like i was like can you help me get people to see the show and she's like totally totally and then as soon as we started every day she was like i mean are you a minority in any way and i was like <laughs> i true i'm literally not i don't know like <laughs> if you cannot help me if that's not true we cannot work together but i would love my money back in that case <laughs> And like these, this interview article, Tasting the Cake, that's a kind of, if you Google Amanda Hunt, you will find some shit like that with me on the internet that this publicist got me. So not, nothing is high profiles interview, but, <laughs> but I said, that's right. Good, good job, Riley. You got a good one. Yeah. Riley really killed it. Riley's been a fan of Vanderpump Rules since middle school. Um, She was tough to hear. <laughs> so funny. She said at one point. In the article, he said, Tom Sandoval says, when I punched Jax, that really, that sent the show into the stratosphere. And I was like, no, actually, it was when Stasi slapped Kristen. We yeah. often forget that he even punched Jax because they continue to be friends. Like, and also when he punched Jax, that was kind of whatever. But then Jax turned to the camera, blood dripping down his face and grinned like a maniac. And that was this like... Right. Yes, Stasi's slap of Kristen was like it, but yeah. then when I think of the secondary thing, I think of Jax. I don't think of Tom. No, no. And honestly, when I think of that moment, I think that Tom pretended to punch him. I think he really punched him, but I think he did it for the cameras. Yeah, and I think that he got hurt in the process. Like Sandoval. Yeah. 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 Probably he, he was way more hurt than he was by Jax and Kristen. Sleeping together while Drive played in the background. (laughs) (laughs) So when he says this about when he punched Jax, it's turned sent in the stratosphere. Riley remembered watching that episode with her middle school friends. Quote: We were like, "Wow, this show is epic." And Sandoval says, "Dude, it was. It was so cool." I liked the part where he he says, I really, really was, like, in love. Uh, like, really? Like, <laughs> really? <laughs> the way this article is written, you, like, know how badly this guy, like, or this, this writer was just, like, trolling him. Like, I think mm-hmm. that they were, like, oh, this guy's a jackass, and I can't wait to make him think that this is a sincere interaction we're having, and then I'm going to light him on fire. Now, obviously, yeah. the biggest thing to come out of this was what's all over every news news headline. It's that he compared himself to um, just, just two black men. Actually, uh, I'm in a, I'm not a pop culture historian, really, but I witnessed the O.J. Simpson thing and George Floyd and all these big things, which is really weird to compare this to that. I think. But do you think in a weird way it's a little bit the same? No. Not even a little bit the same. I don't even think those two instances are the no! same. <laughs> like it <laughs> Like it, it it's just like it it the gall of it and the like this whole article and this whole season that we're also watching and the cake eating thing whatever. They all point to this like sincere arrogant belief that like he isn't wrong Mm -hmm. and like I believe like he believes what he tells himself and I also believe this worked for him once yeah like on a smaller scale but like it worked for him he and we didn't like Kristen Mm -hmm. but like and Kristen I mean she's got her own you know nobody I'm not gonna get up here and say Kristen was innocent but Kristen was a victim of Tom Tom Sandoval even as other people were a victim of Kristen yes like he's he's bad yeah and it's the same way like Schwartz does the aw shucks thing and Sandoval did like the like 
like really like meta and like cool artist guy like that was his thing he was like i'm a musician and an artist and an actor and like i care about people and like yeah i'm good looking but like i'm not superficial like that was his thing but like that was his version of aw shucks that was yeah. his way of making people think that he was not a predator and yeah. you know like that's that's what he was trying to act like he was like an easy person to open up to um after this, he immediately put out an apology. But did you see what happened with Bravo while black? I, <laughs> yes, I did. Um, I think I originally saw the post, the first thing, the first yeah. quote through them. Yeah. Like, and then immediately for him to be like, oh, let me block them first. Oh, more people know about it. I guess I'll apologize. Like, yes. it's just like. No one has ever been less sorry about any of his actions than Tom Sandoval and more sure that anybody will believe him. Yeah, it's bananas. It's like I I just don't understand what's going on in his mind that he was like one of the most prominent black Bravo content creators. Like he was like, I'm going to pick them and I'm going to make sure that I block them. And he didn't just block Bravo Wall Black's Instagram. He also blocked – Kaya and Aaron's in, uh, personal Instagram. Well, we know that from from Summer Moon that he will block. He, oh yeah, you're right. You're you. right. Of That's... course. How could I? <laughs> we know that from Summer Moon. Of course. Yes, <laughs> yeah. you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, it was just this whole article. Like it was just it was incredible. He said he felt like he was a character in Uncut Gems. He also insists that he lasted longer in the Special Forces show than Jojo Siwa. Than the Jojo Siwa? I don't (laughs) think so. (laughs) He said the editors just made it look that way. Oh, did the editors also make it look like she fireman carried you? Like, (laughs) please. (laughs) Please. Oh, God. Um. One of the other quotes that was so funny was he said that when he talked about like his early aughts, like modeling style, he said, because I had a versatile look because I could do this like daddy doesn't love me emo look. And I could also do a more slick back look. The two looks. Those are the two. Like, yeah, I said, okay, yes, of course. The two looks of the early aughts. I do you remember seeing him on the hills? Yeah. I yeah. like he like Jason uh Mr. Giselle Bryant. Yeah. Um has been trying to get on reality TV for a minute. Yeah. Um exactly. and then obviously he did get on reality TV. Yeah. yeah. But like I just I love I love this absolute delusion that he operates under it's really it's i i know you just started watching southern hospitality this kind of delusional self-aggrandizement is like for me why we watch bravo yes it is it's just that it's not it's not fun in this situation because this is the person who actually uses that kind of delusion to then hurt and manipulate people right like where yes you have a person who i'm just learning about grace lily who is wow. <laughs> you know she is also of the same mindset but grace lily so far into the show is not gonna hurt anybody no not I, and if she hurt somebody it would be an accident and she yeah. would never know about it <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> like tom has picked up a shtick and mm-hmm. his shtick is that he's this like flighty artist guy who does shrooms and has led lights all over his house and he's like cool dude bro guy and it's like he's also from the midwest and it's like i don't understand he's like really morphed into this like california guy but like also you're from the midwest like i mean he's been out here a long time if we take him at his word that he's 42 which i do not um (laughs) he's been out here for more than half his life like I'm from North Carolina, but I lived in New York for almost as long as I lived in North Carolina. So yeah. I, I I get how you can like culturally sure. change sure. with all of that stuff. The thing that was like truly chilling to me that made me stop and almost self-reflect enough to not watch reality TV. So I had to put the article down for a second was when they talked about how Tom is so used to narrating his life and like yes. so accustomed to like pausing for an airplane 
Oh my god. Because it was that so interferes creepy. with the mic. Like I was like, oh my god, I bet they all do that. I bet they all like second like like first instinct is to just like stop talking until the noise has passed. Or like to like be like, the way I'm feeling right now, man, it's just like I don't know. Like I was really in love with her. Yeah. Right, Riley. <laughs> and do you think he tried to sleep with Riley? Yes. Yes, yeah. I do think mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I also yeah, think yeah, that. Yeah. Because Riley, I think, is also – was in, in the article. In future interactions, Riley is no longer at these events or with the – because – Bravo wouldn't... has had her killed. Yeah. <laughs> They sent her to the farm up, upstate. That's, That's what they right. Did. To run around with other 23-year-old publicists. <laughs> um, they, in the article, they say – it's so funny. They said, Tom Sandoval has morphed into a unique Los Angeles species. He's late to everything. His publicist never seems to be able to reach him, and his face has that taut sheen that celebrities get from anti-aging protocols. <laughs> I did also feel personally attacked by that. I was like <gasps> – <laughs> no. <laughs> then this is where they said he talks about his life not in years but in seasons and episodes. Sometimes he pauses mid sentence and stares into the middle distance like a doll whose wind up key has jammed until whatever ambulance, helicopter, or other sound interfering entity has passed. And then he continues as if nothing has happened, even when there are no mics or cameras on him. Oh my God. Ick. That's a horror. This is a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> And it also makes me be like reality TV is is more, it's more real than I thought that it was because yeah. these people have an instinct to like be met like it's a hone instinct it's like acting different diff- only in that you get better and more natural at it as you yeah. do more of it yeah and like I also like this is true of Tom and Ariana this is true of every where the, whether you and your boyfriend open a lemonade stand together or you monetize a relationship for social media or bravo or whatever once you decide to like commodify your relationship in that way you fundamentally like change what it is to be in love like I believe Ariana is truly devastated because they were they were house partners love partners and business partners Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like it's it's such a betrayal on every single angle. Yeah. And like, but then also it is like Ariana, I'm not even blaming her. I'm just like, we all have all the footage. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it, it's to have chosen to stay with someone so terrible for so long. It it all it's just fascinating to me. I'm not blaming her for his actions. Yeah. I just am like like you know, when you watch back and she's like, my dad died and I'm sad. And he's like, I know. And that totally sucks. But I oh do God. kind of need to go play with a bulldozer right oh now. God. It's it's in Vegas. And I just simply – like, they have touch-a-truck events at towns <laughs> all over this great nation of yes. ours. You could have gone and played with a bulldozer another day. Yeah. There's an entire park in New Jersey <laughs> called um, – I think it's called the Diggin or something or the Dig or something like that. And you just go and you get to play on – that's what you do. You play. Okay, on. that's fun for a bachelorette party. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's targeted for children, but I'm sure it's fine. Um, also, like <laughs> that one season where he weaselled his way onto the book, the the cocktail book, <gasps> will stay with me for the rest of my life. And like Danny Pellegrino has talked about it, about like how he weaselled his way on there and all of that. Like, it's it. We know that the facts are there, but I think I also lean on the fact that like. The same way he was manipulating Rachel and telling her that, like, he was in a bad situation and, like, Ariana didn't understand and all that stuff. He used that same stuff with Kristen and Ariana, you know? So uh, it was all of that. There's some other um, great parts. Oh, later on, the writer meets um, Sandoval when he's supposed to be filming a confessional. And this is how it's written. Sandoval began to perform loud vocal exercises. He applied pomade to his hair, combing it back with his fingers, changing into a light blue women's suit from Zara, which he said he preferred to the store's men's wear. The suit looked good, but the sleeves barely reached his wrists. As he emerged from the dressing room, there was something about the suit's feminine cut combined with Sandoval's physique and slightly hunched posture that reminded me of Heath Ledger's Joker in the scene at the hospital where he wears a nurse's uniform. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to say, first of all, I'm jealous of Sandoval. I can't fit into any of the suits at Zara. Not me um, either. Not either. 
either. So good for him. <laughs> I don't care if the sleeves don't reach. I'm jealous of that. Um, but like that kind of thing, like Sandoval loves that. Yeah. Like he his takeaway from the article is like one man people are gonna come after me because i was trying to like make an analogy Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. two i mean i am kind of like heath ledger yeah those are those are gonna be his two takeaways yeah i'm like the reality tv heath ledger actually (laughs) you know that he and kyle chan have a text thread where that has been said you know it yeah you know it yes oh god (laughs) Um, I just <laughs> also when they talk about the restaurants, the writer says, When I stopped by Sir in August, the food was terrible, but there was a line of people out the door and around the block. I mean, you have recently visited these yes, establishments. Correct. Yes. Correct. Disgusting. How did you find yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. really bad. The cocktails are strong and mediocre. Like yeah. tasting, but it's like, okay, well, it is alcohol. The food is such that you're like, I don't know if this is nourishing my body. Like, no, I don't know. It's not at all. Everything Mm-mm. is either air fried or deep fried and mm-hmm. just like bland. It might, it, I would it, say, it were microwaved. Micro- I had an omelet yeah. that I do believe yeah. was microwaved. It's like, I'm going to say, it's just like the slightest touch, the slightest touch about air, above airline food, like airplane food. I've had some really good airplane food. <laughs> So I don't know, like, I, <laughs> I would say, like, I it's not comparable to anything I've willingly paid for in my adult life, but, but the experience of being there, there is a future episode that may or, I, that may or may not air, you never know what, like, will actually make the show, but I had brunch and the entire cast was there filming. I can't and wait so, to hear the back. I was like, this omelet tastes like watching gossip. Like, it is the best thing I've ever had. Uh, they write about Tom Tom. Um, at Tom Tom, Sandoval gave me an insider's tour. This is so funny. An insider's tour. There's the men's room, the women's room, he said. This table is really cool, but you got to watch your knees. <laughs> He took me out back to <laughs> He took me out back by the trash cans where he says Maddox ripped his chain and split split his lip the night she found out about the affair and that's when he says that she beat his ass. I was like, okay. Do you believe that? Um I don't believe that I believe that she has some nails mm-hmm. and I believe that she pushed him around and I believe mm-hmm. she ripped off the necklace. But I'm not mad about it. I'm like, okay, I'm glad she didn't murder you, bitch. Like, <laughs> I'm skeptical she ripped, ripped, she, I'm skeptical she split his lip. I okay. am skeptical about that. Um, cause it's coming out now and he, yeah, looks, you're right, you're right, you're it, right. Just as like, I mean, maybe she did. I don't know, but I'm just kind of like, okay, like, I guess. What I love about Vanderpump Rules is like, yeah, where the trash is disposed of at a restaurant is culturally significant to both uh-huh. the people on the show and fans of the show. Yeah. We're like, no, we need to see the dumpster. The dumpster is actually like, that yeah. is an important part of the tour. Yeah, that's actually like an important set piece. That's like the friend's <laughs> couch. Like, it's really important. People really need to see the back alley. Yeah, it's special. Uh- <laughs> I um, also, I was at. I was in uh, Poophole Village, Franklin Village, recently um, <laughs> on a Saturday night to Hold see on. a show. Hold on. Did you call it Poophole? Yeah, that's what James <laughs> called it when he was like, he was like, you're going to open your bar at the corner of Silver Lake and Poophole Village. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, every time I'm in Franklin Village, I think of that and I giggle to myself. Mm-hmm. But the UCB, the Upright Citizens Brigade, is yeah. there. And my boyfriend and I were going to go see a friend's show. Um and so I was like, oh, let's get a drink at Schwartz and Sandy's first. It's literally three doors down. Or it's like around yeah. the corner. Like yeah. we're parking. We're walking. It's super close. Yeah. Saturday night, 8 p.m. We go to open the door. The door is locked. The restaurant is closed on a Saturday night. What? It was very odd. And it wasn't like private party. You know, like sometimes mm-hmm. there'll be a sign that's like private party, blah, blah, blah. Well, first of all, they can't lock the door for a private party. Yeah. Um, but second of all, there were no cars in the parking lot. <gasps> and we peeped inside and the lights were on. Like inside in the – so I think that's very – like all of the Vanderpump restaurants keep really odd hours. But yeah. 
even they are open at 8 p.m. on a Saturday. Also a great analogy for Schwartz and Sandy's where the lights are on but nobody's home. Nobody's home. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) I do think Tom Schwartz is much smarter than Tom Sandoval. Uh, And also maybe even scarier as a result. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's yeah. so quick to push a woman, so quick to yell at a oh, woman. Oh, honey. Oh. oh, buddy. If he is, he has the opportunity to scream at a woman, he's going to fucking do it. Mm-hmm. I, that's his mm-hmm. thing. Um, they also dragged Evolution Media in this article, like just slightly. <laughs> and this is why I asked whether you read the article or if you heard it, because I listened to it. And this is this was how they said it. They said, at, as Baskin showed me around, random objects caught my eye. A can of gasoline, bottle of Tums, and sunblock, a blown up diagram of the female reproductive system atop a file cabinet, and a few move and a few moving boxes labeled bitch. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, write another article about all of that, please. Yeah. Let's get a series going. I will subscribe. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll pay whatever you want. Put it behind Patreon. I don't care. <laughs> it was so good. Uh, but the uh, article ended with Tom Sandoval saying, as long as people are interested, he told me, we're being honest in our feels. And that's what he's doing now. Sitting in front of the camera in a powder blue suit and sunless tanner, being honest in his feels. I watched him on the on a monitor as he peered into the lens with one eyebrow slightly raised. Then the camera rolled and his face lit up with a big, genuine smile. Chilling. Chilling. Haunting. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> devastating. <laughs> the most ups- – I, because I was like, oh, I know exactly what that looks like. I've seen Tom Sandoval do – this like yeah. a million times yeah yeah um a, anybody i know who has met tom sandoval in real life has said that he is not nice yeah. really mm-hmm. 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 fascinating and especially when it's tom sandoval and he was accompanying ariana at an event so if they were at a thing and it was like ariana going to an event and tom was there with her he would be especially nasty that doesn't surprise me at all. He is mm-hmm. absolutely somebody who ruins his partner's moments. Yeah, yeah. And books and lives. Life, And yeah. maybe dog. We don't know. We the, don't. I also – the part of the article where he was like, yeah, I mean, she like took the cat and dog somewhere. She wouldn't have done that if she's gone for a little while. I, I – you will not just be taking my cat and my dog somewhere and I don't know where it is and I don't know if they're safe. Uh-huh. Like, Ariana is a responsible person. I'm sure that those pets are totally safe. But him, but for him to be like, I don't I know don't wherever they, they are. are. Yeah, wherever they are. You have an assistant who can talk to Ariana's assistant. Yeah. And just be like, hey, where are the dog and cat? Can you just give me a little headline on that? Yeah, yeah. Also, he had an assistant in this article who was just sorting out his utility bills. And he says, I just have them do the things I don't physically have to do. And I was like, you can't, you can't sort sort out your bills? It, it is very interesting, these people that have these assistants, because it's like, you could make more money if you just did these things yourself. Like, you're not so famous that you can't manage all these appearances and his, utility bill honestly like, first of all why isn't that on auto pay because they're broke why am i um, saying that <laughs> well i'm sure that they used to be on auto pay and then he overdrew all of them <laughs> as true. he's talked about in different things being like ariana won't pay me for these bills i wouldn't believe a word i don't believe a no. word he says Mm-mm. i mean and we'll get to the episode but i got I got yeah. controversial opinions. Do you want to get to the episode? I don't I don't want to leave any crumbs on the table for the article if there's anything else. No, I'm, I the pictures are incredible. I did think I do really love their couch. I know. It's that shame. green velvet couch, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And the black rug, it's like I don't have the space for it, but like I bet I we know it looks great. That house is beautiful. I hate I hate the fact that those were really nice pictures. He is a he is a actor, he and is. I said this first picture. This is the Debbie doesn't love you. 
The second picture is this all American. We're seeing his range in this article. It's incredible. Oh, God. All right. This episode um, on Vanderpump Rules, we had James setting up for his very first pool party. <laughs> Almost cost me two grand all these towels. <laughs> <What>? like, <laughs> okay. I- <laughs> very relatable, though, because when the yes. first time I am hosting a whole bunch of friends, I'm like, money is nothing. Let me just swipe, swipe, swipe. And I just get all this stuff. And then I'm like, oh, no. Why is my credit card so bill? And it's, or why is my credit card bill so high? And it's like, oh well, yeah, it's because you went to Trader Joe's and you lost your mind. Yeah, I wanted everybody I know to think that like I live an influencer lifestyle where I'm like, yeah, of course we have multiple inflatables. Like <laughs> <laughs> the little, little like something about her inflatable that he got. That so was sweet. cute. So and sweet. the first real version of the store we've actually seen. No, I did also walk by something about her. Do tell. Um, it was closed, obviously. But also, there was like a like a lockbox on it. But you know the ones that you you see at like at a realtor, like a realtor would put on. Mm-hmm. I was like, oof, I don't think this place is opening up, you guys. It has almost opened so many times. Yeah, and we don't really need it. No. But I will go. If Absolutely. it opens, I will go, I'll go and get a sandwich day one. As I was at Schwartz and Sandy's the day after the Scandival broke. <laughs> so I will be hey. something about her. Yeah. I mean, also, they were like, we need to get an alcohol license and all that. I was like, do you? I don't think you do, to be honest. Half of your cast is now sober. So I don't even think that booze is really even your guys' thing anymore. Plus, it's a sandwich shop. Yeah. You can you can serve sandwiches. Eventually, you might serve wine, but Panera doesn't. Yeah, like <laughs> exactly. Have you been to a sandwich shop that's a BYOB? Like it's okay. Also, Sir is <laughs> literally down the street. Yes, you can go get a disgusting cocktail or a warm glass of rosé there. <laughs> yes. By the way, I saw Guillermo at her. <gasps> so handsome. So handsome. Looks like uh, George Clooney and Chris Pine had a baby. Wow. And he he maybe could have been an actor, and instead he is whatever he is that is in charge of an empire. <laughs> He's Guillermo. <laughs> I did once see Max managing at a uh, at Tom Tom. They're they're there. They're in the mix. I know. Everybody said that whenever they used to go before, Peter was always there. <sighs> <laughs> cautionary tale i think peter is mostly retired to florida now oh as a pirate yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um okay so james is having this pool party and he's very excited because i think that in james's mind you really made it on banner pump rules when you buy house and you have a pool party yes i was like okay james sure um he's inviting everybody to it except for obviously tom Tom is, also, just yeah. for a moment, let's pause and think. His house, like my apartment, is in the path of the Bur- Burbank Airport. Uh-huh. Planes are going over constantly. So all these people are like – and then I said <laughs> – For the entire party. <laughs> and and these editors, every single time they show James's house, they're like, but first, an airplane. Like it almost – like if you didn't know, you'd be like, are we flying to James's house? And it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> There's always just flying over James's house. And that is accurate. That's yeah. that's uh I was like, man, that really it it's really personal for me how hard they direct James for that. Uh, um Tom is going with Billy Lee to uh a spa called Intimacy where they're gonna do like cold plunges and Billy Lee is going to creepily sit next to him and watch him. Yeah, Tom is going to go do a sponsored thing, and Billy Lee is going to watch. Like, <laughs> so weird. They couldn't have gotten her in a second tub. It's like, ju- it's so odd. Like, let them just be in two tubs together, being like, Brr. yeah, yes. Like, she's literally just crouched down next to him in a robe and a bathing suit, just staring at him. So strange. And being like, Tom, how does it feel? It's I also I am so bitter about Billy Lee because she decided she wanted to be a comic recently and now she's getting booked on shows all over LA that I cannot get booked on and I am like 
I did everything backwards. I would be surprised. I don't know. She might be very funny. If uh, it, there's a chance she's very funny, mm-hmm. um, but it's it's pretty big to go from like not being a stand up to like in a year being booked on shows with like comics who have their own specials. Yeah. Oh, maybe maybe I who knows. Who knows what the deal is. Vanderpump I root for her party. though. I support yeah. women. Yes, of I support Ugh. female comedians, most of them more than anyone else. So. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> but in this television show as a character on this television show, she's giving weirdo. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. She, she every person around Tom Sandoval is giving yes, I finally can get on the show. Yeah. Yeah. I finally am going to say a line on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then she's like, "Are you going to are you going to start dating?" And he's like, "No." And she's like, "Damn it." <laughs> Oh, because I think it would be, like, kind of cool to date someone who's already in the group. Yeah. Like. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, really? Like, I've never thought about, like, like, I don't know, like, if you, like, like, if you wanted to, like, go to a place where maybe dating could happen and I might be there. Like, I don't know. (laughs) It's funny because you, like, always date your friends and we're friends. (laughs) So. (laughs) (laughs) So dumb. (laughs) Well, Lisa is um, cutting flowers in her McMansion and um, her mall house, and she is in her little crop top Oxford shirt, (laughs) the weirdest shirt I've ever seen on a person. (laughs) She with her new dog. God bless. You know that dog's about to get Munchausen into being having alopecia. I know. Such a cute dog. And I was like, where are the other dogs? Where are they? Let's can we see all the dogs? Could yeah. we just kind of land at the dogs and see which ones are sweet? <laughs> um, Lala and Sheena come and um Lisa's laying it on thick and she's like, um, hey, uh, I'm worried about Tom. I had a conversation with him. He reminds me of my brother, and I feel like we can't let him go down a dark path because he said that he is in a very dark, bad place. And Lisa's crying and Sheena's crying and Lala's crying. And man, Lisa is a great manipulator. Like, yeah, she's pe- really good. People on the internet are like, oh, uh, Tom manipulated Lisa. And I was like, no, 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 no. You don't think? I think that Lisa, I think that Lisa, I think Tom came in and said what he said. And Lisa said, Oh, great. Yeah, I'll just use this to get the rest of the kids to film with you. But I don't think that Lisa feels bad for – like, I think that she feels – here's the thing. I think that she views – she's scared for their lives the equal amount. I think she's worried for – no, not all of them. She's scared for all the lives of the men on the show the equal amount, never the women. They're fine. Yeah. The women are disposable to Lisa, which is wild because yeah. if they had made this season about the women – yeah. For once, yeah, it would be a great season, and uh-huh. instead, it's very, it's coming across very mediocre and like manipulated by the producers. Mm-hmm. But I do, I believe that two things can be true. Sure. I do think that Sandoval, like, I've struggled with mental health, I've struggled with suicidal ideation. So I'm not saying like, oh, we should dismiss anyone who says that. If somebody says Absolutely. that, it's very serious. I will say, at my darkest times, I wasn't telling anybody. Um, but also, even if it's true, Sandoval is still using it to his advantage when it comes to Lisa. You know, like, I'm not saying I don't believe him, but I'm saying he can, he knows how to weaponize his feelings no matter how genuine they are. So I do, and like, I am sure what happened with her brother was like paradigm shifting for her and horrible and so like I can see how she took that very seriously but also Lisa is good at using her real feelings to manipulate people so it's like they they are they are the result of this environment yeah yeah and it's almost like they're finding little nuggets to try to get people to do the thing that they want right like even though 
even if even if Lisa is skeptical of how Tom feels or what Tom is saying, I feel like she's like, that's good enough for me to use to try to get these kids. And then she's like, I'm going to use my personal story to convince Lala and Sheena that they need to hang out with Tom. And mm-hmm. I think Lala was totally right to be like, your brother is a completely different person than Tom Sandoval. And what happened to your brother is horrible. But I think later on, when they get to James's house, and they're telling Ariana about all this stuff, about this like little mental health carrot that LVP is dangling around, Ariana's reaction was just so exactly what I was thinking, which is that like she starts shaking her head, and she's like, <clears throat> he did this to himself. And I'm not saying that he should hurt himself. But he did this to himself, and the solution here should not be from for Lisa Vanderpump to be like, why don't you guys talk to him? It should be like, Lisa, why don't you set him up with a therapist? Mm-hmm. Like, let's do that. Let's figure that out instead of being like, maybe you guys could talk to him. Can like, you guys be his friend? Yeah. Yeah, it's not like he's a little, like, he's, like, a little guy. Like, he's, like, a 22-year-old. He's not James who, like, comes And the- James is also not a 22-year-old no. little guy anymore. No. Every last person on this show has the money, the resources, and certainly the time to get themselves into therapy. I do think somebody like Tom Sandoval would be more dangerous yeah. in, like, once he got therapy. I know. But that's – I'm not defending Lisa. She's, like, if somebody said that to me very earnestly, I'd be like, hmm. Okay, let's like come up with a plan. Let's yeah. like come, you know, like let's yeah. let's really sit down and talk about this. Um, <laughs> but Sandoval never takes accountability for anything. It is the wildest thing I've ever seen. He's a little bit like Kyle uh, Richards in that way. Yeah. He, like doesn't even have a word has to have a special word to not say I'm sorry. Where it's like if we're if we're like so incapable of being like you're right that was fucked up that's step one yeah yeah like tom have you tried saying i'm sorry and not saying but yes exactly and i think that he thinks that because at the end of last season right what like literally five days after all this stuff happened he was sobbing and crying that that was enough i think the other thing that we're not recognizing on this show because we've all we're also over it is that this is also them filming right after that little extra little clip that came out at the end with, mm-hmm. you know, with uh, what's her face with Rachel saying that like this affair started and she wasn't allowed to say anything and she's scared of him and she's not going to have anybody left and all those kinds of things. Right. Like, so you reckon like there, there is, I think now that we, as viewers are watching it, we can sort of like distance ourselves from that information. But if you think about where these people were when they're filming this television show, it's right after all this stuff has come out. Also, I think on the topic of like mental health and Tom Sandoval, Rachel is in a mental health facility right now. And he's annoyed that she is extending her stays and not responding to him and not sending him fucking text messages on his birthday. And I think like that kind of tells you how much this person actually understands and cares about mental health struggles in a way that's not transactional. He's going to use his darkness and his sadness as a way to manipulate people. He's not going to look at his darkness and his sadness as a thing that he needs help for. He's going to use it, like you said, like a weapon. And that's exactly what he's doing in this situation. And he's using it against Sheena, who is the mm-hmm. easiest target. I don't think that it's I don't think that it's by accident that Tom like blocked Sheena. Because Sheena would be the person that checks and sees and talks about it and brings it up and gets annoyed and all that stuff. And then Sheena would be the person that he approaches first at Sir and pulls aside and has a conversation with. Like, he knows that she is the easiest person to manipulate. And Ariana's aware of that, too. So Yeah. And I, Sheena wants to please men. Yes. You know, like, Sheena is somebody who prioritizes men's feelings even above her own. I also, to your point of mental health and, like, how Tom Sandoval doesn't take it seriously, I believe he takes his own mental health very seriously. And, like, but when a, when a like, woman in his life or a person in his life says, I'm having a mental health struggle because of how he would handle that, he's like, no, you're not. You know, like, yeah. I, it's the same way I am with ghosts. Like, I <laughs> – 
I believe I have seen a ghost. But when someone else says they've seen a ghost, I'm like, they probably haven't seen a ghost. It's not real. You know? <laughs> and I can recognize that, like, I, I can recognize how preposterous and egotistical that is. But – I think I think Sandoval applies it to a lot of parts of his life. Well, also, I think it's because Sandoval, exactly what you said, because of how he would use that information, he's like, I'm not going to fall for your shit with, like, you saying you have mental health issues. Like, whatever. Yeah. Like, you can't control me. It's, like, it's so fucked up. And I think, I think Sheena is sweet for saying it to Ariana. But I think the other thing is that, like, I don't know what people want Ariana to say in this situation. Do they want her to be like, yeah, guys, go ahead and talk to him? No. She did first of all, stop telling her because she's not she's not gonna give you the okay. Like I feel like mm -hmm. they're telling her to almost give her the heads up and they almost expect her to be like, Yeah, it's fine, go ahead and talk to him, right? But you're not gonna get that out of her. But you also also shouldn't need that out of her in order for you to like do whatever you need to do for your own relationship with this person. Yeah. Also, last season, which was very fresh for them, yeah. Tom and Tom tried to – and Sheena tried to annex Katie from the show, and Tom and Tom tried to annex Ariana from the show. Yes. So, like, if you want to just talk about it purely from a money standpoint, which, like, I'm sure that they're not just upset from a money standpoint, but, like, in addition to everything else, yeah, they were trying to get them fired. Yes. Like, if you – like, the way that Tom's, like – Ariana's always just like mean to me when I'm bringing her a love juice or whatever yeah. with that cappuccino and all that shit. Like, it's a double or how latte. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's uh, when I, I, yeah. Listen, I hate myself for knowing that, and I hate no. the fact that I will remember that even when I die. Oh and now God. I also will remember it. And <laughs> I don't know if we've talked about this, but that cinnamon pin that Ariana had, I was like, I fucking want that. I don't even drink lattes, but I want that pen. I just want it for the art. Like, I don't even yeah. know what I would do with it because I don't everything. drink that many lattes. I would put cinnamon on everything. <laughs> I would ask for a collection of them and then be like, do you want a little salt? Love <laughs> you. Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Like, can I use it for other things? I, I don't I don't know how fine the the spice or the seasoning has to be <laughs> to get through the thing, but I'm very interested in finding out. Because if I could put smoked paprika in it, that shit is going <gasps> on everything. Forget it. Oh my god, just imagine the possibilities. Oh god. That would be incredible. Yeah. Um they're gonna go on this trip to Lake Tahoe. Sheena and Lala are gonna go. Mm -hmm. Just because to Lisa backdoor pilot Lisa Vanderpump's Hulu uh, show that's coming out. Oh, that's right. I what think. is the show going to be called? I don't know. It's called, I think it's Vanderpump Villa, oh, and it, yeah, that might be in Paris. Is. But I do think that this is related. To yeah, that. probably. I'm sure she's like this show's run its course. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta do some forward thinking. <laughs> and then the episode ends with. Really, just not something I was expecting. James is called by Lisa, and he's like, uh, Lisa, Lisa's like, just, I just need 10 minutes. And so she, he's, like, thinking they're going to talk about Tom. Because she's one by one asking these people to give Tom Sandoval more of their time. So he goes to Vanderpump Dogs. A cursed place. <laughs> <laughs> and right before he gets there, you see Lisa talking to the marketing director of Vanderpump Dogs. I'm like, okay, I don't know why you would be asking her this question. But he, she turns to her and she says, you sure it's him, right? And she's like, yes, Lisa, I'm sure. And then James comes in and little graham cracker comes coming down the stairs. <laughs> oh, wiggling his little butt. Oh. My first thought when I saw that was I thought Graham was bigger. I thought this yeah. is not Graham. Oh my God, but my, right, maybe. But I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's Graham. Yeah. My second thought was, yikes, because is James actually a good, safe person? But also, poor <laughs> Allie and her cat are already in the mix. Like, it just, it's a lot to surprise someone with a dog, even a dog they love, and be yeah. like, now take him home to your house right now. Well, it's also such a manipulative move on Lisa's part again. And I, my thing was. Lisa, how long have you had that dog? 
<laughs> oh my god, the day Scandival broke, Lisa went to the Juliet, which is the place where Raquel was living, and just stole that dog right out of there. It's super close to me. They showed it on the show, so I don't feel bad saying yeah. it. Yeah. And I looked at an apartment there when I first was like looking at apartments in LA, and I saw one and I said, oh, this is nice. And they gave me the price and I was like, oh my God, it's not that nice. Uh, <laughs> and the person who showed me around was, um, you know, they were the most energetic person I've ever met during the day. Oh. I said, wow, you're in charge of this building. I bet a lot of stuff gets done very quickly and then maybe not for a long time. <laughs> And then maybe sometimes in the middle of the day, you just doze off and nobody knows where you are. You don't respond. Nobody to Nobody can find you for weeks or months. <laughs> you know, just that typical L.A. thing. Uh <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I was just – I immediately was, like, wondering how Lisa – like, when Lisa picked up this dog, how long this dog has been with Lisa, and when she was planning to, like, release this, like, bait into the thing and just, like, be like – now James Lee's going to have to listen to me because I found him graham cracker. And, like, what a further way to vilify Raquel to be, like, she just, like, gave him up. Oh, my God. And like, the, And also in this situation, again, Lisa gets to make the man, like, the the hero here, right, of, like, mm -hmm. now James. Now, I will say when James started crying over the dog, I was also crying. No, I'm not even an animal person. Well, sure, I mean, but you're, you're not made of stone. <laughs> yeah, like – I I did hold my cocker spaniel tight in that moment, and I said, "You will never go to Vanderpump Dogs. You don't have to worry about that. That's not going to happen to you." Do you think that that's a nice place, Vanderpump Dogs? No, no. In the same way that Sir and Tom Tom and Schwartz and Sandys have the trappings of a nice place, where it's like, "Oh yeah, look at all these chandeliers. Look at all this like." Yeah. Accoutrement. Yeah. Um, but then when you're like, could I have a salad? You're you're devastated when you see the contents of that salad. I believe that's like what Vanderpump dogs oh my is God. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're those dogs are getting some like bulk, like dry food. Mm -hmm. They're not oh my god. They're I, I don't think the conditions are good. I think in the same way that Dorit's clothes this season have been stamped with designer uh <laughs> logos. But the quality of the fabric is perhaps more consistent with like a tent or a windbreaker. I think that's, I think that's the quality. Of dogs. Oh my god! But just like seeing James literally skip <sighs> down this down the street with his little dog. Oh god, and Graham was really excited to see him, and that was nice. That made me feel good. Like best case, I mean, also, what did you think? Of the part of the article where Tom said, I think Raquel will come back next season. What else is she going to do? So fucked up. Haunting. So fucked up. Oh, my God. Because I was like, what else is she going to do? I mean, she could do anything, but like. Well, right now she is under Bethany Frankel's spell. <sighs> wow. She's Out of the frying pan into the fire with that one, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she said, I'm getting manipulated by Bravo. I'm going to get out of here. And then she signed a contract into Bethany's Frankel's fucking podcast network. Where apparently... It's very poor, unfortunate souls. Extremely poor, unfortunate <laughs> souls. She literally has her voice. And she... Raquel apparently has released, like, several episodes. Like, we're talking about ten episodes, and she releases, like, one every other day. Yeah. And... She's making a good amount of money, so at least there's that. Um, Thank God. <laughs> Thank God she's making something out of this. Like, I do think it was a mistake for her to not come back on the show mm -hmm. because I think she would have had a redemption arc. Yeah. Um, In a way that, like, Tom Sandoval's is not believable. I think hers was believable. But, like, I'm also thinking of this as I think of all reality show people where they – treat their mental health as disposable and good yeah. for her if she truly is not doing that yeah i think that she recognized that if she goes back to the show and she tries to like rehab her image then the only thing that she's then caring about still is a validation from other people whereas in this situation she was like let me get better i mean she spends every episode trashing tom which like i love congratulations yeah. to you love and that. he is her shitty ex-boyfriend i have an ex-boyfriend from seven years ago who like if if i see something about him i'm like well so i understand yeah 
Yeah, I have an ex who I whose picture I recently came upon on LinkedIn. How dare he be on LinkedIn? <laughs> no, actually, I didn't. I think one of my friends did. I was like, I don't want to look him up because like it's weird. What if yeah. I? What if I? What if he can tell? Right. And so my friend looked him up and she said he lost his hair. And I was like, oh, thank God. Thank God. <laughs> oh, thank God. It's not enough, but thank God. <laughs> Oh, my God. Um, well, any other thoughts about these? Oh, by the way, next week, poor Gr- – now, Graham, we're gr- glad you're back, but he is not going to be very nice to Mr. Banks. I mean, I can't predict the future of next week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> but you do have some data points from 11 years of the show. Yes, and I moved in with my boyfriend who – is the original owner of the Cocker Spaniel and my two cats Mm -hmm. um, five months ago, six months ago. Mm -hmm. Time flies when you're deliriously happy. But uh, we're deliriously happy. The pets, uh, less so. Uh It's it's hard. It's hard to meld pet households. Uh Um, Cats and dogs are like famously not that (laughs) compatible. It is like a whole thing. And so – I do – I don't blame Graham. I don't blame anybody no. in that situation. I – lately my cats and the dog have been getting along much better, but they still will spit at him when he walks by <laughs> and he still will chase them if he wants to. <laughs> so it's a constant negotiation, you know, like yeah. – or he'll chase one, but then the other one will be hiding behind a door and then jump out and scare him. It's – they are figuring it out. Yeah. So yeah, it's – I am like this is relatable, but I, I'm gonna need Vanderpump Rules to stop apologizing for Tom Sandoval in yeah. order for me to enjoy the show. Let's see him have some consequences. I certainly don't want anything bad to happen to him. Sure. When I went to Schwartz and Sandy's, we had a nice time. We tipped well. We were very polite to Brett, the guy who's on the TV show and was our bartender. Uh-huh. Um. I don't think anybody should, like, be harassing anybody online, but he should face the consequences of his actions with the people he actually hurt. Yeah, and and certainly he should not be getting more articles. I mean, you can't stop Riley, though. She is a Hollywood machine. She's a menace. She she is going to be getting him – she will be getting him a crossword mention mention in the parade (laughs) magazine that comes tucked into your newspaper on Sundays. Like, she is – I do wonder who she works for and, like – because, like, okay, if I'm sitting down with the New York Times Uh and I know that I'm on – even if I'm not on an apology tour or, like, trying to win hearts and minds, but especially then, I'm going to have someone very good at PR with me. Uh, Someone who is not half my age. Yeah. Um, Somebody who's, like, uh, fielding questions before I talk. Yeah. Yeah. Not someone who's texting. And not somebody who's, like, shocked that your girlfriend still lives in the house. And asks that in front of the reporter. (laughs) Babe, if you have a question, write it down. Wait till the reporter leaves. You can ask then. Also, Also, you're a fan of the show. You didn't know Ariana was living there. Please. Please. Also, um, your crisis manager, your your expert is crisis management. And this is – you're a crisis. In the words of Bethany, this is a crisis. This is a crisis. Be strong. <laughs> I like, but it's like Tom Sandoval thinks he's got this in the bag. He's like, are you watching Love is Blind? I am. Oh, thank God. When Matthew, spoilers for like se- for episode four or something of yeah. this season of Love is Blind, yeah. when Matthew comes in and he's like, now you're mad at me, but I think America loves an underdog. Oh. Like I was like, <laughs> oh. my guy. You, you're not supposed to say that out loud. Yeah. You're not supposed we, to we, say. We pretend like America's not watching. Yeah. You should pretend like you're in this for the right reasons, and the right reasons are not fame. Um, <laughs> I believe that Matthew and Tom Sandoval will be good friends within one season of their <laughs> Yes. Yes. They will cross paths. Oh, I have a question for you also. Yeah. I see a lot of people online saying, I don't think Vanderpump Rules has another season in them mm-hmm. after this. Mm-hmm. And to that, I say personally – we stuck with them through a lizard funeral, which was absolutely the result of Tom Schwartz killing that lizard. Yes. 
so like I'll watch till the end, mm-hmm. but I I do think it's interesting how they refuse to center the women, which I think gives the show a lot more longevity. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, I would not be surprised if Random Pump Rules comes back only because of the way the show is edited. Every episode, mm-hmm. they it's chock full of like black and white flashbacks. I'm like, I know a final season when I see one, okay? I know this. I know this formula, mm-hmm. okay? I've watched the finales of every single show. So, like, I feel like that's what's happening on this show, and I think that they're going to try it with the Valley. I think that they could possibly give Ariana a spinoff, but I think that, like, Vanderpump rules as the show itself, I think it's going to have to end. I think it's going to have to be a different show, and I think that maybe it's around Ariana, maybe it's not, who knows? But I think that it's 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 one of those things also where we watch the show to find out what's happening in the lives of these reality tv people but vanderpump is so saturated on the internet that like Mm -hmm. i already know what's happening with all these reality tv people so it's like yeah um also real quick i did meet china on saturday night a sweet baby angel like a little pixie fairy so sweet wow. so sweet so tiny teeny itty bitty so tiny yeah. so tiny brock was not present bless <laughs> that's a sentence that a lot of people have said about brock actually <laughs> down to his children <laughs> and then and i said to her i just want to say that i have been a sheena supporter since day one and she held my hands and she looked into my eyes sincerely and she said, thank you. There needs to be more people like you in the world. Or she said, we need more people like you. I was like, oh, Gina, you're so cute. Um, wow. And she started to watch a crap and did their crappy awards. And she was like the first guest. And so they were like, let's do a cheers to start off the night. Right. So Gina, Gina, will you lead us in a cheers for the rest of the night? thinking this is a cheers to kick off their show. And Sheena says, cheers to season 11 of Vanderpump Rules. <laughs> that's like, that's right. That's perfect. Yep. That's exactly what Sheena would do. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, these people really are the way that they are. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they're such a blessing to us. I did hear there was a little drama from Watch What Crap and so I don't know if you're going to, cover that on a different show because I won't get into it now. What was the drama that you heard? The Heather Gay of it all. Oh my god. She sucks, man. Um, She's, man, I I loved her season one and she (sighs) Yeah. I don't like this bullying with Monica. I think they should have let Monica back on the show because I think she knows that all of them submitted to Reality Bontes. Yes. Yeah. Um, Also, like, it's literally a gag award show where they win poop gold poop gold spray painted poop trophies it's not that serious heather like no and no. It just in case anybody doesn't know she got mad at ronnie and um and ben for and, nominating monica as a newbie and tried to pressure them to unnominate her which is just like it's just very embarrassing it's, like to that's the best word to use. It is embarrassing. That's the best way I would describe that interaction. Is like, are you not embarrassed? Because that is <laughs> extremely embarrassing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Amanda, I could talk to you for I, you know I, I should have just read the I did basically read the whole article, but we should just do a reading of the article. You should do. You should try to book wow. whatever comedy club um, What's Her Face is at, Billy Lee, and then you should just go mm-hmm. there and read some of the hits from this article. I'll see if I can open for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Can you tell everybody what you have going on and what they can support you on? Oh, my gosh. Um, what do I have going on? Not much. Uh, no, that's not true. Um, <laughs> my film, Dumb Rich Sluts, is almost at the end of post-production, so it's a short. It'll be out there. Um, if you are a film festival person, please reach out to me. I'd love to submit to your thing. And you can follow me on Amanda Hunt at, at Amanda Hunt and Kiss on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, and that's all the news that I have. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you. I will be back uh, tomorrow to talk actually about Love is Blind with Kendrick Tucker. So 
I after can't wait to I listen. after I stop recording with you, I'm gonna go put the kids to bed, and then I'm gonna watch today's dump. Wow, you have a really beautiful evening. I think, <laughs> now, real quick before we leave, do you have a most you uh, do you have a couple from the season yet that you uh, think will make it to the end? Yes or no? And do you do you can you can you guess or can you can you share that with us? I believe I predict they all make it to the altar. Uh huh. And I predict that I. Based on just the first dump of shows, because I haven't seen this new dump. Oh, no, I haven't seen the new dump either. I think Kenneth and what's her name? The uh-huh. Christian ones? Yeah. The Patriot. I, no, she wasn't the Patriot, but she was very Christian. Yeah, the Patriot, yikes. Uh, <laughs> but these, these, this religious couple, they give me similar values, shared values, and like that, I think – yeah, actually makes you want to get married on these shows where you're like, yeah, know each other that well, but we do agree on like big things. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, do I think anyone else? Oh yeah, um, little little red haired guy, the Jersey and, guy, and the little yes, Latina girl, the and that Rican gorgeous girl. Latina girl. I feel like they they actually are very sweet together. Yeah, that was the one couple that I think are gonna make it. The only reason I worry about Kenneth and I want to say her name is Brittany Tiffany. That feels something right. Like that. It's something like that. Yeah. No uh, disrespect to you, madam. <laughs> <laughs> but the only reason I think that they might not be able to make it past, like past the real, or like the you know honeymoon period or whatever, is because once they get to the real world, I do think that the race thing is going to become a thing because I wouldn't be surprised if one day in jest Miss Mama says something <laughs> that she thinks she can say now because she has a black fiance and he says wait a minute <laughs> no you can't say that and then she's like but I didn't mean it that way and you know that Honey, and you I know meant my it- heart yeah, you know my heart. Oh god. <laughs> also these people are from North Carolina like I am from North Carolina and <laughs> I could see – I could absolutely see that. But I do I do know a lot of, like, mixed-race couples in yeah. North Carolina who are very happy, and it's not – Certainly. But – But not a, these two. That's a – I can absolutely see <laughs> yeah, that playing out. I can see that. Or, like, his de- – or, like, her mom says something, and he's like, mm-hmm. that made me uncomfortable. And then she's like, well, I don't know why you're holding it against me. Like, yeah, I, I definitely could see – could see the, the parents – Stepping in it pretty hard. Maybe her dad. I, oh. I don't. Yeah, I just. That all makes me feel know, really stressed out. Um, um, yeah. And very possible. Yes, exactly. Well, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for listening. And we'll catch you next time.